Here I want to show you how you can build a circuit with the ECSP. If you want to build a new circuit, you enter the program. And if you want to start from scratch, you want to have a clean surface, then you go to the menu bar and you go for new, and then you have a clean surface. Here you have a menu bar. I will explain this later. Here you have the simulation controls where you can run the simulation. Since I recorded the video, there was a couple of small changes. First of all, I have expanded this button, so it's time domain, frequency domain. I come back to this later and you can send me a mail if you have a problem or suggestion, comments, whatever. And here you have the pool with all the elements and here you have the assembly area. So here is the pool of elements. You can see that if you hit the element with the cursor, you get more choices. So you just take an element, drag and drop. You can take as many as you want, drag and drop them. These dots are a grid for the elements to snap to. You can remove it. I do not recommend it. Let's now build a simple circuit on Earth, starting from scratch. I want to have a voltage source and in parallel I have a resistor. And I want to connect the voltage source to the resistor so I can connect it by adding lines. Click, 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 click. Instead of connecting by connecting lines, I could also have connected the elements directly. So then I would have maybe turned it. This is right click Then I can rotate the element. Now they are also connected. You see the small little highlighted connecting dot. So they are connected. So this is the other way to do it. Since I recorded this video, there was an important change. You can now drag and drop all the elements together as a group. So you can shift them around, not too fast, otherwise you lose them. If you want to leave this mode, you just click the mouse outside the screen. Again, if you want to rotate one of the elements after drag and drop or whenever you want it, you just right click on the mouse and then it rotates counterclockwise. Some elements rotate clockwise. This is, for example, the, the case for the voltage source. You see, this is clockwise. I have now my simple circuit. I want to enter values to the elements. So I double click to the element where I want to enter values and then I get this enter entry mask. I want to have a voltage, let's say now 10 volts. So I put 10 volts. I want to leave it with 50 Hertz and I want to see traces. In this case, I just want to see a voltage trace later on on the graph. So this is okay now and I go to the other element here. I want to see 100 ohms, for example. And in this case, I want to see the current. I could also see the voltage and the current, but the voltage, I have it already. You can also build a connecting line first before you connect the elements. So let's see, double click, and then you double click again. So double click, double click again, delete. So now you have this line and you can now connect elements to this line sorry so you see if you want to connect and then you have this connecting dot appearing so that's another way how you can do it you can also uh, start a line from another line uh, other line so here for example I want to start and I continue I can also terminate another line on another line, so you see there is always connecting dots. I want to run the simulation now, so I can either click the green arrow here or the new steps function. For the first simulation, I always get this automatically opened. Here I see I want to have a simulation time of uh, 20 milliseconds and with uh, 200 steps. I think this is okay. Let's go. And here I see my simulation. This is the simulation screen and I can drag and drop it and change the size of the screen. Changing the size, I just go to the corner and changing the location, I drag and drop the whole screen. Here we already come to one of the key features of this simulation software. You can change the values of the elements during the simulation. As long as the simulation is running, this red dot here is visible. If I hit an element during the simulation, on many, many elements, I get a slider, and by changing the position of the slider, 
I can change the value of this element up and down. In this case, I change the resistance of this element. As long as there is only the red button pushed, I always start from time zero and I just make a 20 millisecond simulation and I always start from zero again and again and again. If I want to have a continuous mode, then I push this one and now you see that I'm simulating endless. It continues infinitely until I push again the red button to stop the simulation. You can delete elements by hitting the elements with the mouse and then you go to the delete button. That's one way to do it. Another way to do the same thing is that you double click on the element and then you can delete it here. For the lines, you hit the line with the cursor. The line segment you want to delete, you hit it with the cursor. And then you also push the delete button or you right click on the line and you can then delete it. Or if you have a couple of line segments you would like to delete all together, as for example here, you just drag and drop and then you get a rectangle and then you can delete all the red lines, the lines which are now highlighted in red all together. Ah, I have now rebuilt my simple network, but instead of simulating only 20 milliseconds, I go now for 200 milliseconds, but then I need also to have more steps, otherwise I would not be accurate enough. So let's go for 2000, you see. If you are in a continuous mode like now, you have to make sure that the total simulation time is equal to a multiple of the cycle time, otherwise the graph will not stand still, it will travel like this. I want to show you now what would happen then. So if I have 50 Hertz, my cycle time is 20 milliseconds, so here I have a multiple. But let's assume I go below the multiple, for example 2000 or above the multiple. 2002. Let's see what happens then. And I go to continuous mode. You see that it doesn't stand still anymore. For the demo, I just now assembled a little bit a more complex circuit. I let it run again for 20 milliseconds, a single shot. And here you see that I have now such a transient voltage and I can change the frequency of these transients just by adjusting the values of the elements, capacitor or resistance for the damping. So this is the way how you can play around with this uh, simulator. Please test it yourself under www.ecsb.ch.